Judge Barrett, you testified yesterday that Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg opened the door for many women in law. Um, and I certainly believe and know that to be true as a personal matter. She was a trailblazer for women's equality and gender equal equity. Um, as a law student, as a teacher, as a civil rights lawyer, and as a second woman um, ever to sit on the United States Supreme Court, Justice Ginsburg broke many barriers for women across the country. Uh, we, I believe, all fondly remember her as, as, a, as a person who had patience. She had the will and the vision to make our country a more equal place and a more just place. And one of the things she fought for was a woman's right to control her own body and to make decisions about her own body and health care and reproductive choices. The Constitution of the United States protects a woman's right to choose whether or when to become a parent. And it protects a woman's right to choose abortion. Women of color, immigrant women, women with low incomes, and women in rural areas face significant barriers when attempting to access birth control, cancer screenings, and comprehensive reproductive health care. Moreover, anti-choice activists and politicians have been working for decades to pass laws and file lawsuits designed to overturn Roe and the precedents that followed. The threat to choice is real. Just last year, the court heard a case that gave it an opportunity to revisit and overturn its abortion precedent in a case called June Medical Services. The Supreme Court struck down a medically unnecessary restriction that would have closed all but one abortion clinic in Louisiana. Chief Justice Robert, Roberts agreed with the court's four liberal members that the court was bound by its own precedent to strike down the Louisiana law because it was virtually identical to a Texas law that the court ruled unconstitutional in 2016. As a result, women in the state were able to receive the full range of reproductive care. But Chief Justice Roberts wrote his own separate opinion in the case to make clear that in the future, he could not be counted on <clears throat> to uphold a woman's right to choose. Justice Ginsburg provided the critical fifth vote to strike down the unconstitutional abortion restriction in June medical services. So we must be honest about the impact of her passing and the impact it will have on the court's decisions in cases regarding women's access to reproductive health care. Now, my Republican colleagues have said that there is a minimal chance that the Supreme Court will overturn Roe. But back in January, 39 Republican senators, including 10 members of this very committee, signed their names to a Supreme Court brief that asked the court to, quote, take up the issue of whether Roe should be reconsidered and, if appropriate, overruled. So let's not make any mistake about it. Allowing President Trump to determine who fills the seat of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a champion for women's rights and a critical vote in so many decisions that have sustained the right to choose, poses a threat to safe and legal abortion in our country. After all, President Trump said that overturning Roe v. Wade will, quote, happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. Judge Barrett, several times today, you have quoted Justice Ginsburg's testimony about not making predictions in future cases. However, she was far more forthcoming at her confirmation hearing about the essential rights of women. In 1993, Justice Ginsburg's confirmation hearing shows that she testified that, quote, the decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life, to her well-being and dignity. It is a decision she must make for herself when government controls that decision. For her, she is being treated as less than a fully adult human responsible for her own choices. 
Then Judge Ginsburg went on to say, quote, it is essential to women's equality with man that she be the decision maker, that her choice be controlling. If you impose restraints that impede her choice, you are disadvantaging her because of her sex, unquote. Now, Justice Ginsburg did not tell the committee how she would vote in any particular case, but she did freely discuss how she viewed a woman's right to choose. But Judge Barrett, your record clearly shows you hold a different view. In 2006, you signed your name to an advertisement published in the South Bend Tribune. It described Roe v. Wade as, quote, an exercise of raw judicial power and called for putting, quote, an end to the barbaric legacy of Roe v. Wade. You signed a similar ad in 2013 that described Roe as, quote, infamous and expressed opposition to abortion. Also in 2013, you wrote an article about Supreme Court precedent in which you excluded Roe from a list of well-settled cases that you said, quote, no justice would overrule even if she disagrees, suggesting, of course, that you believe Roe is susceptible to being overturned. On the 40th anniversary of Roe, you delivered a speech in which you said that the court's recognition of the right to choose was, quote, created through judicial fiat, rather than grounded in the Constitution. And during your tenure on the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, you have been willing to reconsider abortion restrictions that other Republican appointed judges found unconstitutional. As the Senate considers filling the seat of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was straightforward enough in her confirmation hearing to say that the right to choose is, quote, essential to woman's equality, unquote. I would suggest that we not pretend that we don't know how this nominee views a woman's right to choose and make her own health care decisions. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that the following three documents be entered into the record. A letter opposing Judge Barrett's nomination from the NAACP, a statement opposing Judge Barrett's nomination from the Planned Parenthood Federation of America and Planned Pan Parenthood Action Fund, and a report opposing Judge Barrett's nomination from the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.